O.J. Simpson always needed validation from those around him. And he found it in football, even from an early age. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're chronicling the rise and fall of Orenthal James Simpson, from AFL All-Star to movie star to one of the most controversial names in American history. Are, are you capable of killing somebody? You know, I would say, actually, I would say no. Part one, go OJ go. Despite being born Orenthal, a name his aunt suggested, Simpson was called OJ as far back as he could remember. Following his parents' separation, Simpson lived with his mother Eunice, a nurse's aide, and his sister Shirley. Although they had land, there was no opportunity for people of color, so everybody got out of Dodge, as they say. OG and I were born in San Francisco in 47. Simpson grew up knowing little about his father, Jimmy Lee Simpson, a prominent San Francisco drag queen who later came out as gay. Raised in Potrero Hills housing projects, Simpson fell in with the Persian Warriors, getting arrested three times before getting out of high school. At 15, a friend introduced Simpson to Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants, inspiring him to get his act together. Although Simpson wore leg braces during his youth, he matured into a promising athlete, joining his high school football team. He was big, fast, powerful, dynamic. Upon graduating, Simpson had the same two options as most young American men in 1965, the Vietnam War or college. Although Simpson's grades were not great, he was able to attend City College of San Francisco. OJ takes the football, boom. I think he runs about 90 yards with it for a touchdown. Continuing to pursue football, Simpson helped carry his team to a Prune Bowl victory. This gained the attention of colleges like the University of Southern California, where Simpson transferred. And I asked him, OJ, what is that you're looking for? He said, I want to be the best. I want to go to a school where I play against the best. While Simpson also took track, he made his claim to fame on the football field pulling off a legendary 64-yard touchdown during his junior year and achieving the Heisman Trophy as a senior. As you can see, the Heisman Trophy award ceremony is over. And O.J. Simpson, number 32, University of Southern California, has been beset by autograph hounds. The rising running back was the first overall pick during the 1969 NFL-AFL draft, entering a five-year deal with the Buffalo Bills for a staggering $650,000. Throughout his first three years with the Bills, Simpson didn't live up to the expectations he established in college. Many felt he wasn't properly utilized by coach John Rauch or his successor, Harvey Johnson. He tried to make O.J. a receiver, more or less. What we call tosses, quick uh, opening plays. And O.J. could not catch a ball. He couldn't catch a ball if they paid him to catch a ball. Once Lou Saban took charge, he built the team's offense around Simpson. In 1973, Simpson became the first NFL running back to exceed the 2,000-yard mark in a season, being named MVP. 73 was like a rebirth of his celebrity. When I was 22 years old, I thought, you know, this is like being on a team with Babe Ruth. Although he never played in a Super Bowl, he'd go to the Pro Bowl six times. Simpson also accumulated 11,236 rushing yards throughout his career, nearly breaking the all-time record. By the time he was traded to the San Francisco 49ers, Simpson's football career had run its course, but he was just getting started as a performer. There are certain opportunities outside of football that I can't, uh, I, I, I just can't overlook too, too many more years. A few years before retiring, Simpson demonstrated his charisma as a spokesman through an ad campaign for the rental car company Hertz, popularizing the slogan, Go OJ Go. So he came up with the idea of putting in various characters who would see OJ and endorse him by saying, Go OJ Go. Go OJ Go! Go OJ Go! At the time, black athletes were rarely featured in advertisements that weren't specifically tailored for black audiences, with Simpson being seen as a trailblazer. At the time, athlete endorsements were virtually non-existent. And for them to sign him, a black man, a football player, was groundbreaking. Simpson became a brand, endorsing other products like Pioneer Chicken, Dingo Boots, and naturally, Tree Sweet Orange Juice. It wasn't long until Simpson pursued a career as a professional actor, appearing in shows like Roots and movies like The Towering Inferno. 
His most famous role was the long-suffering Fred Nordberg in the Naked Gun trilogy. Where's Nordberg? Oh, he's right here, Frank. Right. Nordberg. Me. Frank. Your buddy. Part 2. The Juice is Loose Just out of high school, Nicole Brown was working as a waitress when she met Simpson, who was still married to Marguerite L. Whitley. After their first date, Brown described Simpson as, quote, forceful. And I went, what, what happened? And she goes, well, he was a little forceful. And I go, Nicole, why would you let him first date be a little bit forceful? Well, Dave, don't be upset. I think I really like this guy. Despite this early warning sign, Brown was still drawn to Simpson, whose first marriage ended in 1979. Six years later, Simpson and Brown married, having two kids. At the height of Simpson's movie career, his second marriage collapsed. Most of their big fights were about his affairs with other women. In 1989, a hospitalized Brown accused Simpson of domestic violence, saying that he was going to kill her. O.J. Simpson that night definitely got preferential treatment. Had that been anybody else, you or me would have gone to jail. Simpson pleaded no contest, but he received two years probation, 120 community service hours, and a $470 fine. Even after the marriage ended in 1992, tensions between Brown and Simpson escalated. He was obsessed with controlling Nicole. On June 12, 1994, Brown and her friend Ron Goldman were discovered in the former's LA condo, stabbed to death. The authorities immediately suspected Simpson, who agreed to turn himself in at 11 a.m. on June 17th, the day after Brown's funeral. Instead, Simpson found himself in a 1993 Ford Bronco SUV with his friend Al Cowlings behind the wheel and the authorities following. At this point, it's uh, still a fairly laid back situation, a dangerous situation at the same time, because again, the, uh, the highway patrol does not want to intimidate and I repeat, do not want to intimidate this vehicle. The low-speed chase overshadowed the 1994 NBA Finals with an armed Simpson allegedly threatening to take his life. Simpson ultimately surrendered, while defense attorney Robert Shapiro assembled a dream team. There has never been in American history more prominent defense lawyers on a single trial than in the O.J. Simpson case. O.J.'s counsel included F. Lee Bailey and Robert Kardashian, the latter of whom had made Simpson godfather to his second-born, Kim. Johnny Cochran became the face of the defense, with race developing into a key talking point throughout the trial. Growing up in America, any African-American will tell you that we know we have to run faster, jump higher, work harder to do the same thing anyone else has to do. With many African-Americans believing Simpson was innocent, it was feared a guilty verdict could spark another L.A. riot on the heels of the injustices Rodney King endured. Nevertheless, Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden, who replaced William Hodgman as lead prosecutor due to health issues, felt it was an open and shut case. I have to say, it never mattered to me who the defendant was. It was a question of who did it, whether they're famous, whether they're not famous. They all get the same treatment. There was substantial DNA evidence linking Simpson to the crime including a trail of blood identified as Simpson's at the crime scene and blood identified as Brown and Goldman's inside his car. OJ, with that sort of a problem, mm -hmm. we've got uh, some blood on and in your car. We've got some blood at your house and uh, sort of a problem. But the defense team highlighted mistakes during evidence collection and claimed it had been further contaminated in the LAPD crime lab. They also pointed to the LAPD's history of racial bias, in particular racist language used by Detective Mark Furman, who had discovered a bloody right glove at the scene. They found a flaw in me, and then they made up a nexus, a connection to the flaw to the case. While DNA evidence was still new, something that people could easily understand was a glove not fitting, leading to one of the prosecution's biggest mistakes. Provoked by Bailey, Darden asked Simpson to try on a pair of bloody gloves, one recovered from the murder scene and the other supposedly found behind the accused's guest house. To Darden's surprise, they seemingly did not fit. Granted, Simpson was also wearing latex gloves underneath, while the leather gloves likely shrunk from the blood. Simpson also could have been exaggerating, but it was enough to define Cochran's historic closing argument. It's no disguise. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. 
becoming a media circus. The trial lasted nearly 11 months, but it only took the jury four hours to deliberate. The following morning, Simpson was declared not guilty on both counts in a verdict that was watched by an estimated 95 to 100 million people. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson. As some rejoiced, a growing majority argued that Simpson defined getting away with murder. Simpson was a free man, but his accomplishments in football, film, and advertising would be an afterthought for the remainder of his life. <laughs> would you describe yourself as relieved, angry, what? A, a little bit of everything. Part three, OJ, 30 years of infamy. Beyond the court of public opinion, Simpson faced further legal issues when Brown's father, Lou Brown, and Goldman's parents, Fred Goldman and Sharon Rufo, filed a civil suit, found liable, Simpson was ordered to pay $33.5 million to the victim's families. And we finally have justice for Ron and Nicole. Our family is grateful for a verdict of responsibility, which is all we ever wanted. Although he ultimately only paid a small amount over the next 28 years, Simpson filed for bankruptcy, with many of his possessions being auctioned off, including his Heisman Trophy. Simpson provoked further questions around his innocence or guilt with his 2007 book, If I Did It. Everybody is more than willing to jump in and play his game because it's money for him, and then it was going to be money for them. Well, we wanted to put an end to it. With the civil judgment still unfulfilled, the book rights eventually went to Goldman's parents, who shrunk the if and added confessions of the killer. Simpson continued to clash with the law amid accusations of back taxes, battery, and money laundering. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The authorities caught up to Simpson in September 2007 when he was arrested along with several others in Vegas. The victim stated that the one of the suspects involved in the robbery was O.J. Simpson. The charges included kidnapping and robbery, and some members of the public saw this as a redo for his murder trial. This was emphasized by Simpson's hefty sentence of 33 years in prison without parole for nine years. O.J. Simpson about to become a free man, capturing the nation's attention once again. While Simpson had been a notorious name for over a decade, his incarceration brought about multiple retrospectives of the 1994 murders, including the Oscar-winning documentary O.J. Made in America and the Emmy-winning miniseries The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story. Whatever you decide to do, whether you're with me or not, you gotta know this. While some felt justice was served, Simpson was paroled in 2017. Over the next seven years, Simpson remained in the zeitgeist, even being referenced in the trailer for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The juice is loose. Less than a month later, Simpson died at age 76 after living with prostate cancer for nearly a year. Simpson's life can be divided into two eras, before and after the murders. Yet the glowing reputation Simpson developed during his heyday made the past three decades especially shocking and devastating. But in the end, at least publicly, O.J. Simpson felt content about his place in the world. I feel that I got more than most people have, despite everything that I've gone through. 